boom we are live ladies and gentlemen boys and girls it is of course your boy nolan hawkeye anthony here and this is the post game show for the citrus bowl iowa versus kentucky mainly from the iowa iowa's fan perspective let me change this up here I did decide to go live a little bit early as uh, as uh, I was not expecting this to. I was well, quite frankly, I was expecting it to to wind down uh, a little bit sooner. There's about a minute to go in this game. Um, and I got to say, you know, regardless of what happens and, and I'm not saying that I am pleased or anything like that, regardless of what happens, Iowa has definitely battled back. The second half has complete, almost entirely, um, it has almost entirely, uh, been dominated by Iowa. Now, what happens is. You know, here in the final minutes, I'm not sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get this shared out. Let's get this shared out. So I'm going to be quiet here while I share this out. I'm just sharing this out, guys, and then uh, I will be talking. So just give me a moment. And I'm kind of just waiting for the game to conclude here. Um, Whoa, what is that? What the? You know, Facebook used to have this uh, thing where you could just go boom, boom, boom and share it to all the groups. Now you, you can't even do that. Now you have to like individually share it out to, to each group. Let's see. There's about a minute six left to play man what what a shame would it be if the Hawkeyes were to end up losing now they could tie if they end up tying the game then I'm probably gonna have to end this stream and start a new one so if that happens uh I I didn't even think about that um so I I suppose we can wait um a little bit here Let's see. Is it possible to pause or? Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to exit out of this one and make a new one once it is completely over with. So, um, <clears throat> well, we'll see what happens. Listen, at the end of the day, Iowa has battled back here in the second half. Um, It would be a real shame if they end up losing because, man, have they been the better team, Uh, especially in the second half. And then you go back 
to not deciding to kick the field goal and take the points uh, before the end of the second half, which I would have because, uh, well, it's over. Looks like uh, Kentucky got the ball. So it is over. I am gonna, going to go ahead and uh, uh, share this out. It's too bad. You know, Iowa was dominating this game, especially in the second half. Um, they were playing much better. Um, and, uh, it, you know, but th there's many, many things to go to. Number one, not deciding to kick the field goal and take the points. Now, I'm not someone who I'm not going to go too hard on that decision because you do play to win the football game. OK, and Iowa has had pretty good success uh, going for it on fourth down. They have. Um, they have had excellent success uh, going for it on fourth down. So I am not going to go in on them too hard uh, for going for it on fourth down. However, I would say that due to what was going on in the game, you know, um, with it, with the first half almost being done, I would, I would say I probably would have taken the points there going into the second half uh, just to get some points on the board. Uh, and it does look like that came to, back to bite the Hawkeyes, unfortunately. Um, my biggest issue, and then there was in the second half, there were some missed opportunities as well. My biggest issue is is just th there's still plenty of time to go. And when there was about five minutes left to go in the game, Brian Ferentz was calling the offensive series like there was one minute left in the game. And even if Kentucky held them, uh, that it wouldn't matter because there was only a minute. Kentucky got the ball back. Let let's break it down. Kentucky got two possessions under five minutes. They got the ball twice under five minutes to go. And that is on Iowa. You cannot give the ball to the opposing team twice with five minutes left in the game. And of course, from Iowa's perspective, you know, well, we're, you know, we're a really good defensive team. We'll stop them. We'll stop them. But let's go back throughout the course of the year. There's, there was multiple games. I think of the Minnesota game. I think of um, the Northwestern game where had those teams been better offensively, Iowa absolutely gave them room to score a touchdown and make it even more competitive with about five minutes left to go uh, in the ball game. It just didn't, you know, it had not come back to hurt the Hawkeyes uh, before, it, but it did today. It absolutely did today. Um, you know, the body language of the whole team when they got that la the, the, the stop before the touchdown was that the game was over and it wasn't. Um, it's too bad. It, it really is. Iowa was playing much, much better. By the way, guys, I am sick, so I don't have the normal energy that I do have, and I'm still sharing this out. Um, but that would probably be my biggest um, gripe of the game. It isn't even going for it um, on fourth down in the first half. My biggest gripe would be uh, running the ball three times in a row uh, and getting even more conservative uh, with five minutes left in the game, not going for a first down uh, in order to seal the game. You, it's imperative that you seal the game. If you have a chance to seal the game and end it, isn't that much better than giving the ball back to them and just hoping that they don't capitalize on their, on their next um, opportunity on their, you know, on an open door that the Iowa Hawkeyes have left for them. Um, so if I was Iowa, see, that's just, but that's just my mindset. And, you know, Kirk Ferentz is the coach. I, you know, I've never been a coach at the level he's been at. I've played at the level that he coaches at. Uh, and I would always rather 
close the door myself when I have the ball than basically trust my defense and hope that the other team's offense will not capitalize on my missed opportunity, okay? Uh, that is just how I see it. So uh, it's too bad that... Uh, it's too bad that Iowa did not win this game. Um, I uh, it, it sucks. You know, they battled back. The defense was balling in the second half. They were balling. They were getting after the quarterback left, right, and center. Uh, they really were. The run game was chugging, 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 chugging. Um, by the way, in the chat, I want you guys to comment to me what the biggest mistake of this game was for the Iowa Hawkeyes. They, they lose 20 to 17. It is final. What was the biggest mistake of this game in your eyes? Was it, uh, you know, was it what I'm saying with five minutes left in the game, not pushing the ball uh, further down the field or uh, or being a little bit more, um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Not being as conservative. Was it that with about five minutes to go or was it, uh, you know, going for it on fourth down? Was that uh, a bad play call? For me, I can live with that. I really can. So now, I hate to do this, but uh, and I'm going to be doing a video on this. Um, it is too bad that Iowa lost this game, that they did not win their 11th game. Um, I was really hoping that they would win an 11th game for the season. This was a really, really talented Iowa team, but there's, but there are a few things to get to. Um, in this game, you know, ultimately, when you look at this game, it was a tale of two halves. The first half, Iowa came out slow, like they have all season long. And the second half, the Iowa Hawkeyes played much better. The defense was getting after it. They were playing rowdy. They were playing aggressively. Um, and with about five minutes left to go, Kirk and Brian Ferentz decide to get very conservative uh, and basically do nothing with it and give Kentucky two more opportunities to score. And they did. They capitalized on it. They scored. Um, you know, this is just kind of shocking to me because in all honesty, with about seven minutes to go, the, all the momentum was in the Iowa Hawkeyes hands. I was feeling so confident that I literally started this stream early. I was feeling so confident that Iowa was going to win this game that I started the stream early. I started it early because I felt good that they were going to put this game away. But that it, it, it's this game was a tale of two halves. The defensive line for Iowa played excellent. Uh, the run game did really well. I was very excited about what I saw from Gavin Williams and LaShawn Williams. They both looked really, really good. Uh, the, the run game looks excellent. Uh, you know, if, it, if, if Ivory Kelly Martin decides to go to, to uh, you know, uh, and forego his sixth year uh, of eligibility, Iowa is still in excellent shape. Gavin Williams uh, protected the ball. LaShawn Williams protected the ball. They both uh, are guys who can get yards after contact. I am very positive about what I saw from them against an SEC caliber defense. It's not as though Gavin Williams and LaShawn Williams did this against Miami of Ohio. They did this against Kentucky in the Citrus Bowl in a big game. They had an excellent game in their first, in their first major game uh, being the focal point for the Iowa Hawkeyes. So that's, that's a positive. The other positive for the Iowa Hawkeyes is the defensive line. There's a lot of young guys on the Iowa Hawkeye defensive line. By the way, in this stream, guys, I am going to be looking ahead, uh, and I am going to kind of be um, looking back uh, at this season. Um, wow, I guess I could send in the WhatsApp. Uh, I guess I could do that, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be looking back at this season um, and just kind of uh, just kind of uh, recap this season and what I expect next year. Um, I am going to be doing another video on that. And bear with me. I am sick, guys. Like I said, I, I am you know sick. Last night I had pins and needles in my head. Uh, I was hurting bad. I mean, I, I went to sleep from like three o'clock in the afternoon till five in the morning this morning. So um, 
the other good news for this Iowa team is their their young defensive line has really, really progressed. You know, Lucas Van Ness, um, um, Yaya Black, um, you know, Logan Jones. They all have looked really, really good. Noah Shannon, the the D, the uh, defensive tackle out of Illinois, he looked excellent today. He looked great. Uh, John Wagner looked okay. Yes, Iowa will lose Zach Van Volkenberg, but I do feel confident that they will uh, be able to find you know their next really solid uh, defensive end to replace him. Um, I will also tell you guys who I think gets drafted uh, in this stream. Why not? Let's just let's just let's just put it all on the table, shall we? And I will read some of your guys' comments here in a moment. I will read some of your guys' comments. Um, this was an excellent season, guys. Uh, it sucks that Iowa did not win their 11th game. Uh, it, it really does suck that th that they couldn't do that. Uh, because winning 11 games is special. And ultimately, I look at this Iowa team and I look at uh, the, the talent that this Iowa team has, uh, which I'll go over when I let you guys know who I think gets drafted. Uh, and it was really solid. Um, Arlan Bruce looked good today. Um, Sam Laporta, you know, Sam Laporta finally looked like the tight end that I was expecting him to look this year. So that's a positive going into next year. Um, I'm pretty certain Sam Laporta will come back. Uh, and so looking, looking forward to next year, Tyler Linderbaum, I think will be gone. Um, I think we saw him play his last game against Kentucky uh, and, you know, if you're someone who advocates for the star players to play in bowl games, which for the most part, I am, I am somebody who advocates because, you know, I see all these sports fans say, well, why would he play? You know, he's potentially losing millions of dollars, which I understand that argument. I do. Okay. I get it. All right. I do. Okay. You don't want to lose the potential, you know, life-changing money. I got it. I understand. Okay. But the, the flip side to it is, well, if wh what are you playing the game for? Are you playing the game because you love it? You love your teammates? You love the, just the purity of the game? Or are you playing the game for the money? Now, the answer is probably somewhere in the middle, and it varies for each guy. But, you know, when I think of myself, when I uh, was playing collegiate water polo, uh, you know, now the, the type of money that Tyler Lindrom is going to make wasn't on the table for me. Uh, but ultimately, you play the game because you love it. And that's why you play in a bowl game, because you go to war with your team the whole year and you play in one more battle, uh, one more battle to shore up the whole war that you went through with them during the whole season. Because if if you don't end up doing that, then then what do all the meaningless football platitudes mean? You know, you know that we're all brothers in arms, that we're all, you know, that that we're going to war together. We're going to battle together. Oh, yeah, we're going to battle together. But you're going to transfer to Purdue. Oh, we're going to battle together. Oh, but you're going to, you know, forgo the NFL game again. I'm not being super critical about it, but it, it does ultimately come down to why do you play the game? And, you know, I hope Tyler Linderbaum is okay. Uh, I really do. Um, and him getting uh, injured was not uh, a, a positive anecdotal argument that I could use uh, towards why someone should play in a bowl game. Um, even though he looked excellent today, uh, he looked great. So that was just kind of some commentary. I mean, uh, I'm someone who believes that you should play in the bowl game. That's why you play the sport. You play it to go to battle with your with your with your uh, with your fellow warriors, with your fellow man. Uh, that is why you play. Um, and everything else, the money, the the fame, that's all secondary. That's all secondary. That's not the number one thing. That's all secondary. Um, looking forward to next year. For this Iowa team, uh, I, like I said, I think that the running game is in good shape. Um, 
I, I think the O line and the defensive line will be in good shape, which is, uh, which is ultimately why Iowa has been able to have four back to back to back really good seasons in a row. It's because the O line and the defensive line has been excellent for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Let's take a look um, at how the Hawkeyes have done over the past four years here. I have put up the graphic that Iowa is uh, like 12th or 13th winningest program in the past four years. Um, And the reason the Hawkeyes have been able to reload and have a 9, a 10, a 6, and a 10-win season uh, in the past one, two, three, four years is because they continuously reload the offensive and the defensive line. You know, running backs, wide receivers have all come and gone, but and quarterbacks, you know, Nate Stanley, Alex Padilla, uh, Spencer Petrus. But ultimately, uh, Iowa has been able to retool the offensive and the defensive line. At the very least, they have been top of the Big Ten West when it comes to those two positions group position groups. And I don't see it changing uh, for next year. So I think that this Iowa team is going to be very talented heading into next season. Um, As far as who I would say is going to go to the NFL, I put it on Facebook. How I would rank the Iowa prospects, I would rank Tyler Linderbaum, the number one NFL prospect. I would rank Jack Campbell, the number two NFL prospect. And I do think Jack Campbell will declare for the NFL draft. I think Iowa loses him. Uh, he's just too good, guys. He's six foot five, two hundred forty pounds, and can play outside linebacker. He's too dang good. <laughs> he's too good. Um, he's number two. I would say Riley Moss is probably the third best NFL uh, prospect that Iowa has. I would say Zach Van Volkenberg is the fourth best, and I would say Matt Hankins is the fifth best. Uh, I would say Dane Belton is probably sixth best. And those are the six guys who can possibly this year go play, uh, possibly get drafted in the NFL. And you're going to ask me, well, what about, uh, what about Tyler Goodson? Well, he would probably be seventh. Um, Not that I don't think Goodson is good. I do. And I think he, will have a chance to play in the NFL. I, you know, uh, I think he will make an NFL roster, but I don't think he will get drafted. Um, I think there's a lot of other running backs who have had um, a little bit more productive of seasons. Uh, I've said this before. His mother is absolutely awesome. She, um, she shared my channel out. She promoted my channel and I wish her son nothing but the best. I really do. But, um, as of right now, I would be surprised if he got drafted, not if he made an NFL roster, but if he got drafted, just because the NFL has changed so much in, uh, drafting running backs, uh, versus picking them, picking them up, you know, uh, off of, um, free, you know, within free agency. So, um, the Iowa Hawkeyes look really good going into next year. Uh, This was an excellent season. It's too bad that they lost to Kentucky, uh, especially when they they had it, guys. They had it. They had the game. They had it in their grasp. And because they ultimately played way too conservatively, they allowed Kentucky to take it out of their hands. Now, the last thing I want to get to before I take a look at your guys' comments is Spencer Petras, okay? Uh, Spencer Petras missed a lot of throws today. Um, I think this was actually one of his better games. I know he had three interceptions, um, but he did seem to control the offense much more uh, than what I've seen in the past. In the past, he seemed so discombobulated sometimes. But again, it's the same old, same old with him, just missing passes, missing wide open passes. You know, what, what good is it to make, you know, a pro style throw uh, when you can't even hit Nico Regani in stride? All you needed to do is just float it up to him in the vicinity of his catch radius. That's it. That's it. 
So I would give Spencer Petras a, a C minus in this game. It was not, you know, it was not great. He missed a lot of throws. Um, and, you know, the, the reality is, though, I, unless Alex Padilla shoots up the ladder and can take the reins of the Iowa Hawkeye offense, it's going to continue to be Spencer Petras. Now, with that being said, I do have some hope that maybe Joey Labus might be so good that he surpasses Spencer Petras, okay? And I would not count that out just yet. But knowing the Iowa coaching staff as I do, I would be shocked if they started a redshirt freshman at quarterback unless they absolutely had to. They will almost always go over or go with uh, a guy that they feel more comfortable with, even if his ceiling is not as high. So Spencer Petrus had a very average game like he almost always does. Uh, and that is what it is. All right, let me read you guys' comments here. Let me read you guys' comments. It's too bad, guys. I, I was really hoping this Iowa team could get to 11 wins. I, I really was. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read you guys' comments. Let's get to the top here. Jeff, two times you have the ball with under seven minutes and you go three and out both times instead of running out the clock or putting the game out of reach. I couldn't agree more. You know, um, every coach I've had in my life, especially in college, they were always big advocates of uh, when you have the opportunity to put the game away, you put it away because you may not get that opportunity again. And Iowa, with about seven minutes to go, they were almost so shocked that, that they were about to win the game that they absolutely took their foot off the gas pedal and just basically said, here you go, Kentucky. We got to let Kentucky, we got to let you back in the game. We got to make this competitive. I mean, let's think back to uh, the beginning, you know, earlier this season. It, the same thing almost happened against Minnesota, against Northwestern. The same thing almost happened, but those teams didn't capitalize on Iowa's conservativeness. Uh, whereas this game, Kentucky did, and it's it's a shame. It's a shame. Um, and th the biggest shame of it all is I guarantee Kirk and Brian will not look back at it and say, ooh, hmm, we got to make a different, you know, we got to make a change. I guarantee they don't do that. I, you know, remember when the Iowa media said, kept pushing for the Kirk 2.0? Guys, this is the same old Kirk Ferentz we've seen forever. And I'm not saying I dislike this Kirk Ferentz because I don't. I love Kirk Ferentz. But this is the same old Kirk Ferentz we have seen forever. Um, Patrick Leone. I really hope that's the last time Spencer Petrus is on the field. Yeah, we'll see. I, I doubt it. I think uh, unless Alex Padilla uh, takes, you know, takes the position for his own, it is going to be Spencer. Like I said, I have some hope that Joey Labus might uh, grow fast enough to become Iowa's starter uh, this offseason. But even that, I doubt because Iowa's coaching staff will almost always go with the group or, or with the guy that they feel com more comfortable with. And the person that they almost always feel more comfortable with is the guy who is older and has had more experience. Uh, Bob Loney, I would love to see Brian Ferentz gone, but he did have a few good play calls. He did. He did. But ultimately with Brian Ferentz, it's like, you know, in the second half, he has all these awesome play calls. And it's like, okay, where was that in the first half? Okay, what happened to that in the final five minutes? And I remember somebody, I saw a tweet from somebody say that Kirk, they said that for all the Brian Ferentz uh, haters out there, you can't be that upset with Brian because he is the shoe, he is the Sue set. I don't even know how you say that. The Sue uh, chef. Kirk Ferentz is the head chef telling Brian Ferentz how to cook everything. 
And that's probably accurate. It probably is. You know, Brian Ferentz probably does what Kirk tells him to do. Um, and, uh, you know, um, but uh, yeah, he, he did call a decent game. I'm, I'm not upset with the, with the play calls he had today. Uh, Peters missed a lot of wide open guys for big plays. Nico had no one within 30 yards. He missed him by 10 yards. That, that was bad. Now they ended up scoring a touchdown on that. So ultimately it didn't matter. Um, but uh, yeah, Josh Malice predicted a loss, but my God, this sucks. Yeah, it does. It does. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. I'm with you, dog. Uh, Patrick Leon, Brian called that play that worked against Penn State, and this time Reganey was wide open and Petrus made a terrible throw. Yep. Michael Morin, they need open competition in camp at quarterback. No other way around it. I hope Labus wins. Yeah, Labus is good. Labus is is really good. Um, I you know I I remember uh, doing a little eval video on him. He he's the real deal. He's he's really good. Iowa was lucky to have him. Honestly, if uh, if if Koof hadn't been a thing, uh, Joey Labus would probably be uh, be playing at Ohio State. Um, anyways, uh, Rob Loney message retracted message retracted. Um, let's see here. Wouldn't be shocked if Moss and Belton leave Moss is gone. Uh, Riley Moss is gone. Uh, like I said, he is probably the third best NFL prospect Iowa has. Uh, like I said, it is, uh, Tyler Linderbaum, uh, followed by Jack Campbell, followed by, well, actually, yeah, followed by Riley Moss, Zach Van Volkenberg, and then uh, Matt Hankins. I, I would say Matt Hankins, Dane Belton, and Tyler Linderbaum are about tied. They're about the same. Um, but the top four for me, no doubt, are Tyler Linderbaum, Jack Campbell, uh, Zach Van Volkenberg, and Riley Moss. So, yeah, they're gone. Uh, Theodore Thompson, colleges will make the kids sign contracts to finish their degrees. I can't remember if the schools I went to made me sign contracts. Uh, are you saying that that's what's going to happen in the future? Um, I, I don't listen. I'm not advocating for schools to make players sign contracts. That's not what I'm advocating for. All I'm saying is, you know, America these days is extremely nihilistic. Okay. And I'm not trying to get too theoretical here. But at some point, you need to draw the line and ask yourself, why do I do this? Is it for the money? Is it for the love of the game? What is it? And if it is, and in my opinion, the money and the fame are secondary. The love for the game should always come first. G good things happen to people who put that type of pure purity first above all else. Um, and unfortunately, in this cons absolutely consumeristic society, uh, we are seeing just an absolute abundance of, uh, well, again, consumerism, plain and simple. You know, uh, there, there are no, there's nowhere left anymore where you can just have the love of something without some money being involved. There's always money. Anywhere there's a place to make money, that's where it is. Now, but I don't want to go too big into this tangent, though. But, um, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Michael Takahashi, what a disgrace. Fire Brian Ferentz. <coughs> Michael, we both know he's not going anywhere. Rob Loney, I think Meriwether could get drafted as well. I agree, but I think, I think Meriwether will be coming back. Um, I think Mer Meriwether will come back. Um, which, again, let, you know, let's, let's have some fun here. Let's look at the Iowa defense next year. I mean, you the Iowa defense is going to be loaded again next year. Look at the, look at the defensive line. Okay. John Wagner, he will be back. Okay. Uh, Joe Evans, I think could come back if he wanted to. I'm not sure if he is Noah Shannon. He'll be back. Lucas Van Ness. He'll be back. Logan Lee. He'll be back. Yaya Black. He'll be back. Deontay Craig. He'll be back. That's six of the top eight guys guaranteed that we'll be back. Not to mention you have Xavier Wanpa, you have um, true freshman four-star Cooper 
Dejan, who got in at cornerback, uh, cornerback today um, for, uh, let's see what his name is, Jamari Harris. You know, how about how about Xavier Wampa, Cooper Dejan, and Kayvon Merriweather being three of the five DBs for the Iowa Hawkeyes next year? I mean, even if Riley Moss leaves, and, you know, I still feel very strongly about what Iowa has in the back end. You know, they'll have Merriweather uh, back. You know, Cooper Dijon has looked good. Um, you know, Xavier Wampa will probably be ready to go. Jamari Harris has looked good. Not to mention, um, I'm, I'm blanking on his name right now. Um, gosh, who? Uh, Terry Roberts. Terry Roberts, the cornerback. So Iowa will be just fine next year on the defensive side. They will absolutely be just fine. In fact, they might even be better than they were this year. I mean, I'm being I'm being 100 on that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Grat, uh, Grats UK woo Tyler Starnes, Thomas Spencer UK fans, um, UK fans. Hope you guys rebuilt all your towns. Oh yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. Let's uh, let's send some prayers uh, towards the community of of uh, or the state of Kentucky rather, um, in hope that they can get back on their feet. Tyler Starn, Citrus Bowl money will help. Uh, Rob Loney, if they go with Petrus or Padilla over Labus, they will never learn a lesson outside of eight to ten wins a season, and no titles is good enough. Kyle Robinson, great effort by my Hawkeyes, but not running a fullback dive up the gut with Pottenbaum and also running the ball on the weak side of the field when the middle of the strong side was the better. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Kyle. That's true. Pleased with LaShawn Williams and Gavin Williams. That, that's definitely the bright spot. The two bright spots, well, the three bright, bright spots of today is the young defensive line looking excellent and, quite frankly, the offensive line. They looked much better. Um. Uh, Gavin Williams and LaShawn Williams look like they are absolutely ready to be the running backs next year. Uh, and Arlan Bruce looked pretty good. Same with Sam Laporta. I, that's like four or five things. Um, but uh, there's some good things here for the future. There is. There's some good things looking towards the future. It just sucks, you know, that Iowa is literally, they were number two in the country. And now they will probably finish... 22nd, 23rd in the country, when in my eyes, Iowa is 100% a top 15 team um, this season. So that I'm not going to lie, that sucks, you know, because those types of things do matter to me uh, when it comes to looking at the, the legacy of the Iowa Hawkeyes, the, the prestige of the Iowa Hawkeyes, uh, and finishing top 20, top 15 is a big deal. And it, you know, I don't think they'll finish top 20. They'll finish top 25, not top 25. Um, Merriweather and Kerner may not win the starting jobs if they come back. No, Merriweather would. Uh, Kerner is gone. He, he, he doesn't have any. Um, I don't think he has any time left to come back. Uh, I would agree with you with Kerner. I think Kerner may not win the job. Um, I think Kerner has won the job these last two, three years because Iowa just hasn't had anybody um, to, to, but Merriweather is the real deal. He, he's good. Uh, Elliot Fun, why did they call a timeout and not take a delay of game? Great question. Dean Freen, this loss is on the coaches. Play too conservative on those drives. Dean, totally agree. Totally agree. Listen, guys, let's wrap this up. Um, at the end of the day, a 10-win season is still excellent. Iowa won the Big Ten West, which is excellent. They have a lot of talent going into next year. Um, they should be a top 17 team going into next year. Um, I, I fully expect them to be top 17. I don't know who decides to leave, who decides to come back. As I said, the, the four top uh, NFL players potential draft picks, in my opinion, are Litterbaum, Jack Campbell, uh, Riley Moss, and Zach Van Volkenberg. 
but things do look good uh, moving forward. I'm not sure what's going to happen happen at the quarterback position. Well, actually, I am sure. It, you know, it's it's either going to be Petrus or it's going to be Padilla, unfortunately. But there were some good things, including the running game. Sam Laporta looked good. Uh, and overall, this was a great season. Did it end on a low note in a game that they should have won? Absolutely. But sometimes you can't have your cake and eat it too. Either way, I want to say thank you to all of you who have hung out with me. You guys have made this channel a success. We are so close to being over a thousand subscribers. So if you're watching this for the first time and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Uh, because subscribing makes you feel good. Um, and uh, I will be doing this going into next year as well. Um, I don't really see anything that's slowing me down or stopping me. Uh, I, I, I think the sky is the limit for this channel. And it's not necessarily because of me. It's because of you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys are excellent people. You're Iowa Hawkeye fans. Uh, and this is probably one of the more fun things I get to do uh, in my everyday life, and I have absolutely had a blast this season. You guys will see me for the NCAA basketball tournament and things like that, you know, the, the wrestling tournament. I'll still be around, uh, and I am going to continue pumping out videos uh, for the rest of the year, but I just wanted to give a heartfelt thank you to all of you uh, who have made this an excellent experience. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, DBAP, don't be a pussy. Well, facts or feelings, your feelings matter. Love y'all. Go Hawks. See you all next time. Bye.